Hello dear students. Welcome. Are you ready to learn another new concept today? We are extending on our concept of uh, organic chemistry where we are talking about some basic concepts which will help you to understand organic chemistry in the long term as well as clear your basics for a strong foundation. The topic that we are dealing with today is substitution reactions. Now this substitution comes from the word substitute. Now you know very well substitute. You have a substitute teacher coming in when your main teacher is not there or is busy. So substitute means taking the place of somebody. So substitution reactions effectively mean that one when one atom or group is replaced by another atom or group. For example, we've taken a very simple example over here, methane plus chlorine gives you CH3Cl plus HCl. So here the place of hydrogen from methane has been taken by Cl. So one atom has replaced another atom. Take the second example, C2H5Br plus NaOH. So place of one atom is taken by another group that is OH to give us an alcohol. Take the case of aromatic compounds, benzene, where the hydrogen of the benzene ring is replaced by the nitro group from nitric acid, which can be, for understanding purposes, be written as HONO2. So it is the NO2 which replaces the hydrogen from the benzene ring. So we have a lot of examples of substitution reactions when we study organic compounds. We have broadly classified them into three categories, free radical, nucleophilic, electrophilic. Each of these reactions is named according to the attacking reagent. In other words, during the course of the reaction, what is the main attacking reagent? What is the first attacking reagent? Now in, your, in the earlier study, in the earlier videos, you would have noticed that we mentioned various types of attacking reagents and we had divided them into three, free radical, nucleophiles and electrophiles. Uh, in order to clear the concept, in case you are not clear, I would strongly advise that you first understand what are these three types of reagents before proceeding. Otherwise, you will be completely lost when we go on further and you will find video on these. So we've broadly classified them into three categories. I've taken one one example of each of these categories. So free radical is when an alkene is react with uh, is treated with chlorine in the presence of light because free radicals are usually generated in the presence of light, heat or peroxides. Three. Nucleophilic. That means when one nucleophile replaces another. So nucleus loving. So here OH. This has lone pair of electrons so because of which it has affinity for positively charged centers. Nucleophilic reactions are further categorized as SN1 and SN2. We shall be dealing with SN1 and SN2 in the next video. For the time being just concentrating on what are nucleophilic reactions wherein the attacking reagent is a nucleophile. Electrophilic usually take place in aromatic compounds when the attacking reagent is an electrophile, an electron loving species, which in this case, in this particular example, it is NO2. In this part today, we are doing the free radical substitution. That means when the attacking reagent is a free radical. Any free radical reaction is always divided into three parts. Initiation, propagation, termination. Initiate something which starts a free radical substitution reaction. In other words, that's when the first free radical is generated. So we've written step one is generation of the free radical. Free radical example we've taken is very simple, simplest example that you would be doing since your class 9 or 10. Methane plus chlorine gives you chloromethane that is or methyl chloride. First step, chlorine breaks down to give you chloride free radicals. Basically what is happening is the chlorine molecule which is formed by sharing of electrons between chlorine atoms breaks down by homolytic fission. 
So the type of fission that is happening in this particular step is homolytic fission because that is what is giving rise to free radicals. Now, homolytic fission also we have discussed in earlier videos. Step 2, propagation. Now, this free radical is very, very active. Why it is very active is it's got an unpaired electron over here. We've got a state where chlorine has the two of the orbitals like this. So this unpaired electron wants a partner. It's alone. It doesn't have a pair. So it tries to pair up. Now in the process of pairing up, it will go and attack whatever molecules, ions, species that it comes across. Trying its luck somewhere where it can pair up to form its electron. One of the possibilities that we've taken over here is methane gets attacked by the chloride free radical. What it does is, it takes up the hydrogen from here forming HCl. Now methane is actually formed by a single covalent bond between carbon and the four hydrogen atom. So because of the highly reactive chloride free radical one of these bonds breaks again by homolytic fission. So we are left with carbon having an unpaired electron called as the methyl free radical and HCl is the byproduct. Now methyl is there. Now methyl is there with a carbon which doesn't have a pair. So it will be restless. It will go around, go around, go around. I want some partner. So what it does is, there are many possibilities. One of the possibilities that we have taken over here is methyl free radical goes and attacks another chlorine molecule. They form a product chloromethane and chloride free radical. So chloride free radical is what we started off with. Now chloride free radical, there are various possibilities. Chloride free radical can either go and attack another methane molecule or during its course of collision, if it comes across another chloromethane molecule, so there's a fight between the two of them and let's suppose chloride free radical wins. So it takes up the hydrogen from CH3Cl with the result CH2Cl free radical is our byproduct in this and HCl is our side product. Now CH2Cl again it goes around it wants to pair up so what happens it can either attack another chlorine molecule it can attack another uh, methane molecule depending upon what it comes across. The next possibility that we've taken away is it is attacking another chlorine molecule. Here it takes up the chlorine. So we have CH2Cl2. Basically chlorine atom becomes attached to it. So we have our second product of this particular reaction. Our first one was chloromethane. Second is CH2Cl2. But interestingly again we have a chloride free radical which is again active. Goes around wants to find a partner. So if you notice what is happening is it's resulting in a chain reaction. That means it goes on and on. And at each step what is happening is the four hydrogen attached to the carbon in methane are being successively replaced by chlorine. So first we have one hydrogen being replaced by chlorine. We have the second hydrogen being replaced by chlorine. We have the third hydrogen being replaced by chlorine, giving us a range of products. So we started with methane, chloromethane, 1,1-dichloromethane, 1,1,1-trichloromethane or simply put trichloromethane this is also the chloroform commonly called CHCl3 and the last product in the series is and after which there are no more hydrogens that can be replaced is CCl4 carbon tetrachloride a common solvent or tetrachloromethane. So successively it is being replaced causing a chain reaction. When you analyze the reaction mixture, it is not that you will only find CCl4. CCl4 is one of the options 
because the free radicals during their course of the movement they will either combine with another chlorine molecule methane molecule there's continuous collision going on so you will have a mixture of products in the sample you will have chloromethane dichloromethane trichloromethane tetrachloromethane everything is there in the reaction mixture how does this how will this chain reaction stop so if, if you recall you would have heard about chain reaction taking place at the on the surface of the sun as well which is generating a lot of heat as well so how does this chain reaction come to a stop there has to be an end because we do have sample containing a lot of methane as well so how do we explain that it will stop when two very active free radicals who are looking for a partner they come together so i have one you have one let why not make friends so you have chloride free radical combining with another methyl free radical to give us simply ch3cl or methyl free radical colliding with another methyl free radical giving us c2h6 with the result what will happen is once the free radicals are not there in the reaction mixture the reaction comes to a stop stop another word for stop is terminate termination that means when two free radicals collide and they form a stable product gives us the last reaction or the last step in this particular reaction called as termination this reaction takes place at a very high rate at a very fast rate because of the instability of free radicals now from the exam once is you one is you understand second is from examination point of view because i've seen a lot of students who understand when they are uh, being taught but then when it comes to putting down on paper there's a lot of confusion and they forget the steps the only and one and only solution to that is practice as soon as you finish this video there are two ways of doing it either explain to yourself sit in front of the mirror or have a friend a sibling a parent sit with you actually the best would be to get somebody who is of your own uh, level to um, so you can explain that to your partner so you will either explain to yourself or to somebody else who may benefit from your explanation and second is very essential is you write try writing these steps yourself in order to understand at least i would say three times in order to get a better hang of it so you can swap the two steps also like you can write first and then maybe explain to some class buddy some student in your class who may need help in organic chemistry so it you'll be good doing good in the process i shall be taking up nucleophilic substitution reactions sn1 sn2 simultaneously in the next video hope to see you there